you've made it this far, it means you've probably gotten to the end of the book. And I'm excited that you made it this far because I hope that this book was jam-packed with some useful information for you. It took me six years to research the framework, um, to look through all of the research on what's effective and not effective with technology use in the classroom, and to put together the framework as well as much of the information in the book. So it's not something that I slapped together quickly. It was very mindful and purposeful, and I thought it was important to get this information out to K-12 teachers who need it the most and often get this information the least. I hope some of your takeaways from this book include not only understanding the elements of the framework and how it's informed by the research, but also some smaller pieces. Like number one, the tool really doesn't matter. Um, there is no magic snake oil. There is no one cure-all or perfect tool. If you're using the latest and greatest tool, if you're using an older tool, it doesn't matter as far as the learning outcomes. What matters the most is the teacher and the teacher's moves and the instructional choices they're making around the tool. Just like everything else we've done in the history of teaching and learning, we know those good instructional moves. And I hope you'll keep those in mind when you're using technology. I know that I do much more than I ever have before, ever since reading the research. I'm very mindful of making sure that there are opportunities for human-to-human -human contact and to socialize and to talk through what students are doing with their technology tools and to make sure I'm not isolating them and assuming that that is good and effective use. And also just really thinking through how I can use technology and leverage technology to connect and to situate learning in everyday life. There's so many different ways to make that happen. And unfortunately, some of the educational apps and resources that we have tend to isolate rather than situate. And so um, I hope that you took that piece away as well. And finally, you know, asking that question of what's the value added, making sure that that's always there. What is the value added of this? I'm putting a lot of time into this technology piece. Is it worth it? Is it worth the time and the outcomes I want my students to gain from it? And on a, on a side note, I guess I want to mention that it's okay if you design a lesson and it doesn't meet all three E's. I know I have. What I hope you take away from the framework is not that the framework is black and white, yes or no, you use it or you don't, um, as far as the lesson goes. Rather, it's a guideline, it's a benchmark. It's something to say, oh, you know, I scored about an eight or a nine. I'm meeting some of the ease, but the truth is I could make this much more social for my students. Or, hmm, you know, I probably could do a better job situating this in an authentic context for them. And sometimes adding those elements of the framework don't necessarily have to do with the technology choices you're making, but have to do with the instructional moves around the lesson, pairing students up, bringing in an expert into the classroom to talk to the students about the content that you're studying. Um, maybe it's it's possibly just um, having students do a, a think, pair, and share or some other instructional strategy together, but that could actually elevate or and add value to the lesson as far as the Triple E framework is concerned. So I hope that your takeaway is it's, it's, a, it's a reminder of the good teaching and learning strategies that we know and making sure that we are integrating those when we are using technology in our classroom. And like I said in the very beginning, I made a lot of mistakes and I continue to make mistakes when it comes to technology in the classroom. Nobody's perfect, but if we're trying in a mindful way and we have our eyes on the learning goals and the outcomes and we're not um, completely starry-eyed because there's shiny tools in front of us or because there's educational apps telling us that this is the cure-all, if we can get past that and just remember what the research tells us, I think we're going to have some pretty good outcomes in the end. So I look forward to hearing from you. Please feel free to tweet me on Twitter at lkolb. Feel free to continue to connect um, on the EEEframework.com. We have a professional learning network that's coming up in there. And please use all the resources around the professional um, learning network in the EEEframework.com. They are open source. They are free for you to use. I want teachers to feel comfortable using them and knowing that you can modify and adjust them as needed with my full permission to do that. Um, so I hope that you found this journey useful. I know I enjoyed um, 
getting to know um, teachers who want to think and do technology much more mindfully and carefully in their classroom. And um, I look forward to hopefully meeting some of you in person one day, if I haven't already.